Hey everyone, today we're kind of returning back to our more scheduled programming with all the hubbub that happened last week. It was pretty crazy. Uh, didn't get to do the results as well, but now that, you know, Vancouver results came out really quickly, as well as some of the new uh, deluxe ones that, you know, Fuzzy was able to collate, again, big props to him. Uh, yeah, it's been good. So we can take a look at that. Also, uh, if my voice is crappy, then it's because I got COVID, sir. So feeling not the best but hey it is what it is right so let's get started first off we have taiwan right the homies there they had some good interesting decks right they're in set two right now the raziels raziels getting two of them in top eight and then we have like luad ava uh blingmeyer varga training tool zorga but then the f first place first place was actually the raziel right followed by a luad ava ava's like i guess everyone is playing ava we're gonna see a lot of ava uh, they got a really e easy deck code as well, right? And then we've got the Blame to Me there. But Razel is a deck that people have been rating really highly. So this is just the normal Razel list. So, I mean, ride line. So very nice. But then onto here is where we, we see the differences, right? So first off, let's just throw this out. Everyone runs Selgeon. It's it's just really good. We have the TF TF uh, support with like the, the, the Minerva order as well. So that package is all there. We have a top deck check, as well as two cyclers. Two cyclers and three energy cyclers. So overall, the I guess the cycle count has gotten a bit lower. But the main thing here for for finishing turns, we have is the lag rail. So like, I, like everyone has been saying about Razel, this deck lacks finishing power. What it doesn't lack is uh, CB, right? Because you have easy ways to just counter charge every turn. So look, if you want to make a big finishing push, then... Lag rail CB2 is not really an issue. I think a lot of the times you'll realize that your deck and your hand is great. Well, no, not your deck. Your hand is great, right? But your opponent is not dying as well. But if you're able to put this after putting all your crits back into deck, you just have like heaps of pressure there. And does it really matter? Like, like I said, your hand has no issues. Just start discarding them. It doesn't matter. Get rid of them. Because... Um, as long as you win anyway, who cares about the cards in your hand, right? Yeah, who cares? So, pretty, I guess, I, I like this tech. I like this tech. You don't, like, the cool thing about the deck is that you don't need that many copies of each card. Because you can, once they're in the bin, or once they're on the field, they're somehow able to come back anyway, right? Because Lagrail's, uh, Razel's effect, always be able to just call every single turn from the drop zone. So, I think it just works out really well. And uh, even, like, one copy only of the support that from set two. Guess what? If you get it out, you'll always be able to see it, right? So, pretty nice, pretty nice. Uh, the next we have is Malaysia. So, Malaysia had two Elstras and two Vargas. And then we had a Migo, Ava, Prison, and Luad. And then after that, we got Jun Hui. Came first with the Wellstra. All right, Sherman was second with the Migo. Third was Liao with Wellstra again. And fourth was Brian Lowe with the Varga. So, we'll just take a first place look. Look at this Wellstra list, right? Normal ride line. Boom. No toll, right? Big fan of the no toll builds. Also, interesting thing. I know a lot of people have been saying, right, that, you know, when you're playing Wellstra, you want to run three of the satellites, but only two, right? Only two satellites. Instead, they invested it all into 4X of uh, Brill Mine and then 4X of the uh, the Eins. That lets you go to Soul and draw a card. So, overall, I think, I guess... <laughs> I, I feel like I feel like it's an interesting take. Definitely not something that I think a lot of people expect because everyone's going like, do I run the toll build? Uh, we gotta run three X of the satellite, right? He's not even running four X of the uh of, of um the Lubetiel, right? Not not even four X, just three three is enough, right? Even two of this running for the regard, not even running Persona, right? Just running the uh the new one that kind of came out, the one for the uh the Vajra, which is like very very. It's like a how do I explain it? It's very, uh, you know, generic is not the right word. I guess it's very, it's just useful in any really situation. So it's it's okay. I guess it's okay. So overall, this is like, I think this is just shows that Wellstra has not been figured out yet. There's still many different ways to build the deck. And, you know, there's still different builds popping up. And all of them seem to work. So, yeah, pretty cool. Pretty cool to see. Then after that, we have Vancouver. So this one was our BSF that happened very recently. Uh, 
I think I think Vancouver's pretty meta, right? Look at look at these lineups. We got the Prism Luard and Shinui, right? Uh, and then you know in the fourth place have the same thing. But then in the second place, I am Thou. What what a teammate. We're gonna see probably similar to that like soon. But they decided to get the Luard and take a green on, and then OT to pass. They threw away the Shinui and uh, took the uh, took the green on instead. Now I don't know. I feel like you can throw away the Luard and take the take the the green on, but I don't think you can throw away the Shinui and take the green on. But Uchi to pass did it anyway. So what's there to say? I think the big the big thing here is that we're gonna get Sergion in like three days. So these lists these lists are gonna change, and then set one is gonna come out, and like well, set one is gonna come out when Sergion comes out. So these lineups are actually gonna change. I think. I actually think they are. So I think it'll be very exciting to see in like two weeks' time what does this look like. Uh, but then in uh, then in the try format, so everyone in Vancouver for their standard lineup took a Shirinui, which is crazy, right? It's crazy. Uh, not because like, you know, Shirinui is bad or something like that. It's just because I feel like when you <sighs> when you're in this kind of format, you know what the best deck is and what people are likely to bring. So you can run counter picks. But I guess in Vancouver, all of the everyone just went. You know, there is no counter pick to Shirinui, right? Prism is not a counter pick. The only counter pick to Shirinui is Shirinui. So we're all playing Shirinui. So that's what happened. And then you know, that I think th this has this has to be like the same second place team. I guess the unfortunate thing here is that yeah, I think we all had plans. You know, imagine a world where you can run three Shirinuis, but V Shirinui kind of sucks. Just run Gurgit, right? It's the unfortunate reality. Uh, but yeah, so. Pretty cool, like, Gurgit, Shinui, Shinui seems like maybe the most meta, I guess, <laughs> tri-format lineup right now. Um, but that's not to say that, you know, Katrina's bad. Like, everything here, every single premium deck here, I think is fine. And I think it just kind of comes to show, like, the premium format's, like, still pretty good, right? People complain about Crest, Shinui, but hey, we've got Highlander, we've got Katrina, we have, we have a uh, Night Rose as well, well, Grand Blue, and all of these are pretty competitive. So, pretty cool to see, pretty cool to see, and V is just V. Right. Uh, in terms of decks, take a look at the Greedon. So this Greedon actually is running two of the Mask support, more for uh, Almagestar. Uh, but I guess when you when you look at the top five cards of your deck, you can literally just grab anything. So it might not be bad, right? It might not be. I think it might be pretty okay. You're only running two of it as well. The rest of the deck is just pretty straightforward when it comes to Greedon, right? Stand, stand. Hope you don't play, play against the Shirinui deck. Um, and then just just get triggers, right? Just get triggers and you can win. So pretty nice, pretty nice. Uh, then on to Singapore Deluxe as well. So these, I think the Singapore Deluxe was actually streamed. Um, and I think in the final, just like two Avas. So not a surprise, it was three, three Shinori, two Ava, one Wall Star, one Prism, and one Jeweled. Uh, and then, yeah, the two Avas at the top. Ava, pretty pretty meta right now. Uh, the finals, though, was kind of a curb stomp, though. One Ava going first and just popping the opponent. So, yeah. There's that. Then the Shinori came third, and then the, uh, then the Wall Star came fourth. And then after that, there was also a Indonesia WGP. This is like last week now, right? And this had three Shinoi's as well. Um, but then two Raziel, one Varga, one Orphist, and one Blaine de Meyer. And then the winner was Michael Luis Adrian with the Raziel. So again, right? Again, in the WGPs, we have another Raziel doing very, very well, right? Uh, second was Feather Zafrin with Shinoi. Jovan Anandra was third with the... Uh, with the office and fourth was Leonardo Kevin with the Blaine de Meyer, right? So let's take a look at that Razel game. This one's actually going to be a bit of a different list. So instead of the lag lag rails, right? They're just running. I I guess it's like more how do you say it? Standard grade three lineup in that you just run one Sages. I think some people run two, but yeah, one Sages is enough. And then also running this grade three, uh, the Masha, right? That gets power when you call it. So. Is okay with the Persona, right? It's like hitting 38 by itself, which I think is like a nice number to have. The order package is still there, TF, Selgaran, and the and the uh, Minerva order. So all of that is there, you know, Persona Ride, Grail as well is all good. Also running more painkillers. So one thing is just, you know, painkiller pops itself, so you can kind of call it back later. Um, and running Red OT as well, which I think is great. I think Red OT is fine in this deck just to add in that finishing power, but just no lag rails. Um, there's going more all in on just like, I guess, standard play. In terms of just running normal stuff, and then also three of the grade two support as well. So, yeah, bit bit of a different take for Razel, but look, both of these decks performed very well, right? And I'm not gonna lie, I think Indonesia was like probably like a nine rounds. They had like max cap, so 
it's definitely very consistent in what it does, right? And then after that, we do have the Philippines as well. So I'm just going to first off and say that I know there is drama that went down at Philippines. And, you know, people have been saying, Kai, can you investigate this drama a bit? And I can only say that, you know, I really can't. I, I can do, I, like, the b biggest difference between this this drama and, like, the uh, and the, the Man Long stuff that went on is, like, the Man Long stuff had videos where you can just look at it and you can clearly see an intent of cheating. Well, this one, you just don't, right? I can only rely on, you know, what people say. And to be fair, I won't be able to get, you know, ev everything of what everyone says. Because you have to, like, interview the judges, the players, all the players that got effective kind of thing. So, with, like, there's definitely some people I won't be able to interview. And even after that, right, who's correct, who's not, um, I can't really decide. Right, I, I I won't be able to just say you know this guy is definitely right and this guy is definitely wrong. This is something that likely Bouchard has to investigate because they have access to everyone. Right, they can find out what the head judge did. They can f find out what they said, what the other judges did as well. They can also interview the players and get their statements and come up with an actual like punishment or or you know f do something with the findings. Right. So the only thing I can really say is if you have you know, accounts of what happens, um, go, go message Bushiro, like, support at, I think, like, Bushi, Bushiro dot, dot com. like, it just, it's on the website, let them know your account, um, if you were affected by it, especially, right, so if you were someone that got affected by, like, the decisions, or, like, you know, um, just, if you know someone who, who knows that, maybe let them tell their side of the story, and then, you know, a more clearer picture can then be established. I do want to say that, you know, shocking is wrong, right? There is there's a clear difference when you want to, you know, when you call a judge over to resolve an issue uh, and, like, they lay down their judgment, but then you try to ask for, like, high penalties for your opponent if they got into, like, problems. I think that's wrong. That is pretty much shocking, and I think it's in the floor rules as well. So if you just want to say, you know, uh, yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. So, unfortunately, I can't really say much of that, but I can only talk about the results right now. So, first of all, standard. So, uh, quite a diverse list. A lot of meta, meta decks here. Uh, Boats coming in with a Shamu list as well, just not running a Luar, which I think is fine. And then onto third and fourth, we have Neuros Beta with, you know, Jiva and, like, the Zorga. So, really, really strange text there. And Team Philippines with the Drejeweled, Shirinui, and Leonor lists. So actually just totally, except for the Shirinui, bam, the other two, pretty pretty crazy. But I do think they're not bad, right? I think people have been overlooking them quite a lot. I think Drejeweled's still a fine pick. I like it a lot. Uh, Leonor, kind of the same thing, even though I'm much more of a Drejeweled fan than a Leonor fan. But then Team Philippines came first the next day at Tri-Format, this time taking Gridora into their premium slot, right? So pretty crazy tech, I have to say. Like, what... Gridora into maybe a bunch of other stuff? Is it good? Right? Maybe maybe this is the way. Right? Maybe this this is the way forward. We see in the standard slot the Shirinui's and then the counter Shirinui kind of text with the prisms. So pretty funny there. And then, you know, V is just V. You've got gang it. Look at that. Chrono Jet. Uh, this is like, you know, Ro Royal Paladin, Jewel Knights, and then Ange as well. But yeah, th there's actually some pretty good. Even the Steam Maiden list is there. It's just... Right, pretty, pretty insane. Let's take a look at some of these lists. So first of the stand list. So the Shamo list, I think it, when, you, when you have a Shamo mindset, right, it's very, very, I'm going to this, I'm going to this tournament and uh, I'm just going to do my play and you deal with it, right? You deal with it. I, I like this deck a lot. It's really fun to play, but would I take it to a tournament? It's kind of scary, right? It's kind of scary. But if you do take it, big props to you. Um, a lot of, uh, I, I guess a lot of lot, lot of text here. We've got the, the powerful tech, you know, extra power. Two auras, just to sneak in some orders. Got four good orders to get. But main thing is just a bracing angel ladder. Really important into, you know, just locking Shunui out of the game. Uh, and then just all the, all the, I guess, what was it? I can't say the name. So, Lis, Lavris, Su the French, the French cards. Is it French? It's French, right? So yeah, three, three, four, four X French cards, PGs, 
uh, and then, you know, grade three and the grade one, they can all gain power and like do things. So yeah, very, very nice. Very, very nice. Uh, and then onto the premium stuff. So this is the Gridora one. So Gridora with, you know, enlarger, you got some pretty cool stuff. It's just like, it seems pretty teched out. You know, dark face, two Gridoras. Uh, and then what is this one? Can Candelaria. This is like old school, right? At the end of the that PR, I remember when this PR came out, people were like, man, this is going to like change the game. But I feel like, it. I guess it did when Gridora was like a thing, but then Gridora kind of died off when everyone else started playing other stuff. Uh, and then, yeah, just pretty crazy just seeing one Gridora here. But I wonder like how's its matchups against it. I think if you're afraid of things like, you know, Night Rose and all that, you know, Gridora, bam, feels good. Does it affect like Crest Nui though? I don't think it does, right? I don't, I don't actually think it does. Or I guess if you don't expect a lot of them, it's fine. And then we also have the Steam Maiden. So pretty crazy seeing Steam Maiden back. Remember when they got hit? Uh, but it looks like they're still able to do things. So running just the Chrono Jet as well. Um, and then just... This is just one, right? Just draw the one in Tirana. If you do, good times. Good time. If you don't, just draw it anyway, right? So yeah. Pretty crazy. Cool to see Steam Maidens here again, right, sir? Big congrats there. But that is all the results. Kind of went through them pretty quickly. Just kind of wanted to see how the metagame is right now. The metagame is going to change quite a lot. Uh, so, yeah, that's kind of it. We're going to have a, probably a big crazy week this week as well, just with all the things that are happening um, and the new set coming out. So, probably a bunch of videos. Not a great time getting sick, but hey, it is what it is, right? Life's unfair. Let me know what you all think in the comments below. I'll see you all next time. All right. Bye.